I grew up on a farm, so I've always been intrigued and enjoyed working on the farm. I am a manager with my brother and father, uh, Nameka Farms Incorporated. Yeah, the effects would be huge to the industry if we did not use antimicrobials. The reason we're using antimicrobials is to minimize the sickness within the population of the cattle at the feedlot. Most of the antimicrobials are due to sicknesses that are quite contagious, so we're trying to minimize that quickly. We're trying to reduce death loss in the cattle. We're also trying to reduce suffering. And from an economic point of view, we're trying to reduce cost to the operations. When we use these products, we use them as per what the vet prescribes or as per what the label says. Antimicrobials are a class of drugs that kill bacteria. They either go in and actually kill the bacteria and then the host immune system comes in and cleans up the damaged tissue or some of them just suppress the growth of the bacteria enough that the immune system can come up and clean the rest of them. So antimicrobials are used in human medicine, but they're also used in all sorts of agriculture. They're actually used in some crop production, but mostly in livestock production. In the cow-calf industry, obviously we treat individual cows when they get sick. Antimicrobials are also used in the feedlot industry. They might be used, again, to treat individual animals that get sick, or they might be used on arrival when the animals come to the feedlot because we know that's a very high risk time and often it's more prudent and better for the animal's welfare to go in with antimicrobials ahead of them getting sick than it is to let them get sick. But antimicrobial resistance is a health threat that we are going to have to deal with globally and it's one that definitely affects producers both in that resistance will limit our ability to treat our animals and protect their welfare and growing resistance in the public health sphere is going to limit our options and make it harder to be producers. So I believe producers need to be informed. I'm the science director with the Beef Cattle Research Council. I communicate with researchers about what industry's research priorities are. And the other thing I do is try to communicate with producers about what kind of research needs to be funded and what the research results mean. One of the common misperceptions is that all antimicrobials are the same, and in fact, they're quite different. The important distinctions are in how important those antimicrobials are in human medicine. There's four categories of them. The low importance category, which really means no importance in human health, and that is actually the category that's used most extensively in beef production. The second category is called medium importance, and those are drugs that are used in human medicine, and they're used to treat relatively minor bacterial infections and there's a lot of alternatives so if that a medium importance drug doesn't work there's plenty of others that will work and the next category is called high importance those are also used for bacterial infections and there are alternatives to those too but fewer and the most critical category is called very high importance and those are ones that are used for very serious bacterial infections in beef cattle, less than 1% of the drugs that are used are in the high and very high importance categories combined. What's really important about those drugs is that if those don't work, we got nothing else. In the beef industry in Canada, we have antimicrobials from all four of those categories licensed and registered for use. It's appropriate to use each class in a circumstance where the benefit to that animal or to that group of animals outweighs the risk of resistance. It's when we're talking about those category one drugs that we need to be very, very cognizant and we need to think, is the benefit to this animal is sufficient to offset the potential resistance that's then going to go and affect a person, potentially, with a resistant bacteria. As a producer, I would urge you to be very cognizant of which drugs on your farm are category one, and those are the ones you need to have a, a discussion with your veterinarian about when and why to use them. The primary reason that antimicrobial resistance is an issue is because antimicrobials are our major tool for treating bacterial infections. And if antimicrobials do not work against treating the bacterial infections, then we are going to wind up with some serious health problems in our cattle population, some serious animal welfare problems because all of a sudden now we have sick animals that we can't treat properly. And the implications of we're not just raising animals, we're producing food. And so everything we do with the animals on our farms and in our feedlots has implications further down the food chain. It is our privilege, not our right, to be able to use antimicrobials in the animals that we take care of. 
producers need to talk to their veterinarians and get an understanding of how the different products work and what the implications are in the animals and also in the food that they ultimately produce. When we go through our health protocol, we work with our vets, so they will recommend the specific drugs we should be using. That comes from a combination of price, comes from a combination of how well the drugs have been working in the past, how well they're working in the industry, and that's how we decide what drugs to use, when we use them, how we use them. For our operation, we have a vet out here every single day, so we always have that interaction going with our vets. When you have an overtly sick animal in front of you, you know that you need to do something. And the most responsible thing to do is to pick the drug that has the best probability of curing that animal with the minimal impact on human health. And that decision might be a bit complicated to make, but with the assistance of a veterinarian, that's how you use it. If we're gonna talk about how to reduce the development of resistance in the antimicrobials that we use, we need to change our management system. But examples of this would be low stress weaning and gives the calves more chance to adapt. One of the other management practices that we've had some big success with is pre-weaning vaccinations. If we take the calves and we pull them off the cows two weeks before weaning, run them through the chute, give them all of their fall vaccines, turn them back out with the cows for another two weeks. In that two week period, they're not under any stress at all. Their immune system has ample opportunity to develop a response to the vaccines and provide protection against these diseases. Then, when they get taken to a feedlot or they get transported or they get run through an auction mart, they already have the immune system protection in their bodies and they're much less likely to get sick. And we can significantly reduce the amount of antimicrobials we use at the feedlot and change whether we use it at all if these animals come to the feedlots with their vaccines and their immune systems in place. The evidence is right there. The antimicrobial resistance in Canadian cattle and Canadian beef is really low. It can't be really low if those drugs aren't being used prudently. So it tells me the producers are doing a good job and they're seeing the benefits. Producers understand the concept of antimicrobial stewardship. We understand the concept of leaving something in a better situation than we inherited it and that we're working to do the same with antimicrobials from the perspective of resistance.